Hi 106, this is your assignment for week six. We are covering two units in your group piano textbook this week, unit five and unit six. Both of these units are dealing with minor, five finger patterns, hand over hand arpeggios, sight reading, transposition, and some harmonization. So remember when setting up minor, it's where that half step is falling is what's different. That half step with minor is falling between the third and fourth steps. It's in that third position versus the fourth position for major. So if I was setting up C major, tonic, whole, whole, half, hold, versus now setting up minor, this half step is going to move down to tonic, whole, half, whole, whole. So in setting up a minor position, there are those that prefer to set up major and drop that third finger. There are those that prefer to do a minor pattern spelling, tonic hole, half hole hole right from the beginning. So with your book, these opening pages are showing you lots of different ways that you can practice these five finger positions. You can alternate a major into a minor. That's a great way to get used to that half step being in a different location. They're suggesting going up the white keys. You could go up chromatically. You could take it around the circle of fifths, such as we did last week with the major five finger patterns. I encourage you to use different articulations, alternate your dynamics, watch your hand position. It's a great way to hit on all of those things in a simple pattern. I also encourage you then to add your minor one chord at the end of it. I would encourage you to put it in a hand over hand arpeggio just like we did last week with left, right, left, and then that tonic at the top. Remember your book is only ascending and I encouraged you to descend as well since that is more difficult for your coordination. That's a great thing to work on. Your book again has you going around a circle of fifths. That's a fine way to practice. I personally think hand over hand arpeggios are going to be more effective because it's leading us into that regular arpeggio fingering that we're going to see coming up in about two weeks. On 76 and 77, you have three short pieces that I like to call sight reading. They're very scalar based. So when you are looking at your pieces now, especially with this unit and the next unit being in minor, you need to think about that key signature. For example, if I have a key signature with three flats, I know for my major key, it's that next to last flat, so I have a major key of E flat. To figure out what the uh, my minor tonic would be for this key, the easiest thing to do is to go down three half steps, showing me that my tonic is going to be minor. I know there are those of you that like finding the sixth scale degree of your major, that works as well, so whatever you are more precise with. So if I'm looking at study, I've got a key signature of C major. That would give me a minor option of a tonic of A minor. And the end is where you want to look to validate what you've got for major or minor because 99.9% .9 of the time it is going to end on tonic. So I see that A and that is ensuring that yes, I am correct that I would set up that A minor position. These three examples also have some transposing keys suggested and I, I encourage you to do that as well. There's a couple more sight reading exercises here for you on 78. There's a review about making sure that you understand the difference between a slur and a tie. If minor key signatures are something that's new to you that you haven't thought a lot about or don't have a lot of experience with, here's a great place for you to practice identifying both major key signatures and what their minor would be. I'd be happy to go through this with you individually or check your work on this page if you would like to complete it. You've got one repertoire piece here in Unit 5. It's an etude. It's in A minor. Use the same strategies that you used with Scherzo this week. You can see that it's an A, B, A form with that DC Alfine. So use that as your practice sections. You can also see that it is in A minor. Coordination is tough on this because it is a round or it's an imitation between the hands. So my best advice to you is to learn one hand at a time. Watch your rhythm. Make sure those eighth notes are twice as fast as your quarter notes. 
then learn that left hand, which of course, as I just said, is a direct repeat. So this is a round or your simplest form of, of polyphony that's happening here. When you start to put it together is when it gets a little bit challenging. So use that idea that we used this week of one hand playing and the other hand on a non-playing surface. So you can feel how the hands are going to go together. Try that idea of saying what the coordination is to get yourself looking vertically. Together, left, together, 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 together right. And then vice versa. Then when you put those hands together, you'll have some muscle memory on that coordination that's going to help you. This is a piece that we will spend some time on together in class. Your harmonization is going to be, you've got three examples here on page 82. This is going back to the same form of transposition that we did two weeks ago, where you have a tonic and a dominant. They're asking you to choose tonic or dominant based on the scale degree of your melody. Minor is not gonna make any difference. If your scale degree is one, three, or five, you're gonna choose a tonic. If your scale degree is two or four, you're gonna choose dominant. So these are exactly like what we did with major, just in minor keys. That is the end of what I'd like you to look at in unit five. So as you turn to unit six, it is simply doing these concepts and expanding on them. We've got minor chords practicing between major and minor. I still would do it within the five finger pattern. You've got harmonization here on page 87. This is the page for your weekly grade next week. It is the same concept as what I just talked about. They've given you a melody. They're asking you to choose a single tonic tone or a single dominant tone. Remember that writing it out I do not encourage you to do that. I encourage you instead to identify it by Roman numeral. Remember, since we're in a minor key, that one needs to be lowercase, the Roman numeral one specifying minor. Your book is asking you for one tone per measure, and based on our time signatures, you can see that that's what is called for. We'll work through these together in class, but it is your choice for your weekly grade of any of these on here, page 87. Transposition is not required this week with these. There's a great piece called Takatina that we're gonna skip over for right now. We'll touch on it in class a little bit. I'll bring it in on uh, week six, or excuse me, week seven if I have time. It's a great piece for spotting, it's a great minor piece, but this week I'd really like you to concentrate on sight reading, harmonization, and transposition. The other part of your grade for this coming week is number four on page 91. So this is part of a five piece sight reading set. Just like the sight reading we saw in unit five, these are all in minor. So make sure you're figuring out that minor hand position correctly. Take a look at your registers. Make sure that you're looking at your time signatures. You've got a lot of different counting in this one. You do not need to transpose for your weekly grade, but I would like to hear number four. So lots of minor this week. Bring your questions, bring your examples that you wanna work on in class and play through in class. And remember then that the weekly assignment due Friday by 5 p.m. is your choice of a harmonization on page 87. You do not need to transpose. And my choice of page 91 Number four, again, in the minor key written, you do not need to transpose. Have fun.